Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the five books that are on my May TBR list. Yes, I'm old school. I've got these Apple wire headphones, but I swear the microphone on it is quite good. So we're just going to roll with it. So it's finally May. It's actually May 4th right now, the day that I'm filming this. Happy Star Wars Day for those who celebrate. I've currently got Return of the Jedi on waiting to go. And um, before I start that, I thought I'd jump on here and talk about the books that I'm wanting to read this month. I don't set myself a huge amount of books at a time just because I'm not a person who reads fairly quickly. I don't want to be the person who's like, I want to read 19 books this year like some people do. I'm like, how do you guys not have families and lives to be getting on with as well? And so yeah, thought I'd set my uh, goal of five, a nice realistic goal. Um, and these are the ones that I have been etching to read for a while now, or ones that have just caught my eye recently that I just want to read straight away. And if you haven't done so already, please give this video a like, hit the subscribe button, and comment below on any books that you're reading this month that you want to recommend to me, and I will check them out. Okay, book number one on my TBR May list is a book that I've seen everywhere, people reading on the tubes, in the park. I had to get it because it just kept catching my eye. It is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. I won't go into too much detail about it. I will review it towards the end of the month, um, but I am enjoying it. I'm flying through it. It's fairly easy to read. It's not the most beautifully poetic book I've ever read in my life, but it is simple and fun. And definitely, I'm already going to recommend it to people if you just want something lighthearted and easy to read. It's set in 19... Pardon me. I just had dinner as well. I'm like burping. Mmm. Gross. Yeah, set in 1950s, 19, no, 1960s America, um, around this woman scientist who's not taken very seriously, basically is forced to resign as a scientist. She then goes on to sign as a host for a cooking show where she suddenly gets this following of women. And it's basically about how this woman and all of these women stand up and change the status quo during a time where women were not taken very seriously and were seen as second class citizens which still i guess is happening today in a lot of many many countries it's soon to be an apple tv series i can talk as i'm reading it i'm like this is like i can see exactly how what tv show this is going to be like enjoying it so far book number one Okay, next up on my list is a book called Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. She is the author, I think, of another book called A Thousand Ships, which I actually haven't read. This is a book that tells the story of Medusa, but not the one that we know. It's a kind of fresh take on on the like classic tale and is supposedly turned on its head in a very interesting, very thought-provoking sometimes quite funny way. Yeah, it says here that it brings empathy and nuance to one of the earliest stories in which a woman injured by a powerful man is blamed and punished for the assault. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely into the vibe of like Greek mythology and stuff. I'm seeing there's like a lot of it around at the moment. I haven't really delved into it too much. I've obviously read The Song of Achilles um, by Madeline Miller, which I guess everyone's read. It's like amazing. I'm definitely excited to jump into this story because Medusa has always been a character that's really intrigued me. I actually just find women characters who are not necessarily per se good really interesting. I just, they're like my favorite type of character for some reason. I don't know why. Like I'm a huge Cersei Lannister fan in Game of Thrones. Yes, I know that she is an evil crazy woman but I understand a lot of her motives through it and I just like I really enjoy reading characters that are like that so this sounds like it's going to be totally up my street book number two the next book that I am looking forward to read this May hopefully if I can get around to it is a book called Dust Child by and again I apologize in advance for the pronunciation of this beautiful name Nguyen Fan Kui Mai, I think is correct, this book. Now, I read her previous book, which might have been her debut novel um, during lockdown a couple of years ago called The Mountain Sing. I've definitely been on this channel talking about it. And it is, to my recollection, one of my favourite books that I've ever read of like all time. I'm kind of set in Vietnam during the war and also like a little bit before it about this this daughter and grandmother relationship and um, through time it really like blew my socks off I think because i had like been to vietnam and it like knew the, the the place and the history of it i just was totally like transported and taken away by this book 
And so I was in this bookstore the other day and I saw her name like on the new fiction uh, books and I was like, oh my gosh, she's got a new novel out and it is Dust Child. So I am so excited to read this. It says if you are a fan of Pachenko or Homegoing by I think the name is Ya Yasi, you're going to like this book. I'm actually not a fan of Pachenko, like really not a fan, did not enjoy it at all. I haven't read Homegoing, but because I'm such a fan of our previous book, The Mountain Sing, I'm totally ready and invested to like hopefully love this book. It says here the description of it, uh, a, sus a suspenseful moving saga about family secrets, hidden trauma and the overriding forgiveness set during the war and present day Vietnam. So it sounds a little bit kind of like the same as the like most previous book. It goes into a little bit more detail. Oh, there's a fly flying around. Yeah, I think it spans over lots of generations to do with this family, um, which does sound very like Pachinko. But I have totally like high hopes of this book because the previous book, The Mountain Sings, was, su was like a five-star book for me, hands down. So hopefully this is just as good. Number four on my list is actually kind of a questionable one at the moment. I don't know if I'm going to like choose to get into it or not, but it is The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. Ever since living in LA, I've been really intrigued to wanting to read her work. Lots of people have been like talking to me about her and her like her novels and stuff, but I do know that this one in particular, which I think is actually more of a memoir, is supposed to be like a national bestseller. I don't know if I'm totally in the mood at the moment to be reading books that sound as sad and as traumatic as what this one does. I read Crying in H Mart earlier this year and I was like, uh, you know, maybe reading books about people dying of cancer is just like not something that I necessarily enjoy putting myself through. This book is about basically how she loses her daughter weeks before Christmas, or days before Christmas, I think, she dies. And then weeks after Christmas, after that event, her husband then dies. And it's basically kind of the portrait of her life and how she comes to terms with this like traumatic loss of the two people in her life that she loves the most. It's, it's fairly short, but again, I'm kind of a bit like apprehensive. I'm like, oh, it's, I do want to read Joan Diddy and I want to like, I've heard so many good things about this, but I'm like, oh, I don't know if I really want to dive in to something that sounds so sad at the moment. So we'll see. We'll see if I get through to that or not. And book number five on my list is actually a book that just randomly caught my eye when I was on the Literary Hub website. If you don't know that website, it's basically just a huge kind of like blog type website with thousands of articles that just is constantly talk talking about and keeping you up to date with the latest news about books and stuff. And I saw uh, this book in particular was on a list of like most anticipated reads of 2023. And I read it, the, the blurb for it, and I was like, oh, that sounds completely up my street. It is called The World and All That It Holds, and it is by the author Alexander Hemon. I randomly saw it, caught my eye. It basically it sounds like historically fictiony, but following the, uh, the life of two men who fall in love with each other, which, if you know me, that's a winner. Yeah, basically set at the time of the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, which basically was the event that started World War I, follows the story of um, the main protagonist, Raphael, and how he finds himself at war, where he falls in love with a fellow soldier, which sounds amazing. Uh, and they escape the trenches, they survive near certain death, they get into a tangle with spies and Bolsheviks over the mountains and into the deserts, all the way to Shanghai, is basically about how their love keeps them going to the end through all of it which like sounds epic to me and totally something if you give me set me like a time and place and tell me about a love story about two men that you just wouldn't expect to hear i am gonna read that book like when i read the prophets by i can't remember the, the author's name set in the like antebellum slave era time about these two men who fell in love with each other at the time. Like, I'm like, oh, let me hear that story. I want to hear those voices, you know? And the book that I'm writing just now is also set in a time where, where the story and the voices of these two men w w would not have been recorded, would not have been talked about, would be co completely erased by history, even though there's evidence about it debates that it's true, which I'm not going to get into too much detail about it just now because I don't want to give my idea away. Give me a book about that and I am sold. Uh, yeah, they are my five TBR kind of picks for May. 
Sounds like a month of really good reading. We'll see if I can get through it all. I'm going um, on holiday this month to Ibiza for a bit. So hopefully I can read a bit during the day when I'm like hung over on the beach. That should be fun. But yeah, let me know what you are reading this month. Comment below any books that you want to recommend to me and I will check them out. And until next time, I will see you when I see you.